St. Basil's Church on the campus of the University of St. Michael's College in downtown Toronto, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. The televising of the day's Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is an anonymous donor from St. John's, Newfoundland, for the soul of her husband, Fred, and for deceased relatives. The second is Annie Bernard and family from Ottawa, Ontario, for the repose of the soul of Jacob Bernard, who died January the 13th, 2007. In remembering and praying for Fred and Jacob in this way, you are joined by thousands of people across Canada. On their behalf, I thank you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of God, the love of Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we begin our celebration, let us recall that we are in the presence of the risen Christ and that we do need his continuing mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. All-powerful and ever-living God, direct your love that is within us, that our efforts in the name of your Son may bring mankind to unity and peace. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. The Holy Spirit says, Today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, as on the day of testing in the wilderness, where your ancestors put me to the test, though they had seen my works for forty years. Therefore I was angry with that generation, and I said, they always go astray in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. As in my anger I swore, they will not enter my rest. Take care, brothers and sisters, that none of you may have an evil and unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God. But exhort one another every day, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partners with Christ, if only we held our first com confidence firm to the end. The word of the Lord. and 
The Lord be with you. Also A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. A man with leprosy came to Jesus, begging him and kneeling. He said to him, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him, and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But the man went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out into the country, in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. The gospel of the Lord. The first reading of daily mass this week and for the next several weeks is taken from the letter to the Hebrews. More a sermon or a treatise than a letter, it's described by its author as a word of exhortation. It is addressed by an anonymous church leader to a community of believers who in the past have undergone some kind of trial and now are facing a new one. Some are tempted to abandon their faith and to fall back into their former ways. In making his appeal, the author alternates between sections of warning and encouragement and sections in which he offers reasons why believers should remain faithful and steadfast. The reasons he gives are all related to the life and destiny of Jesus and to the salvation that he has won for us. Up to this point in the sermon, he has offered arguments to show the superiority of Jesus to the prophets and Moses, as well as to the angels. He is superior above all by the fact that he is the Son of God in human form. He took on a life like ours and lived it to the full, a life embracing even suffering and death. In doing so, he opened up for us a way to eternal life. Today's reading and the larger chapter from which it comes contains an appeal to its readers to remain firm in their faith. It recalls a famous incident in the story of the Exodus. The Israelites, having experienced God's saving act on their behalf and escaping from Egypt and crossing the Sea of Reeds, begin to encounter difficulties in their journey through the wilderness. They complain against God and against Moses. Because they do, almost all of them, all of that original generation, will not enter the promised land. 
Learn from their example, Hebrews says. Don't let what happened to them happen to you. Remain firm. Be faithful. At the center of today's reading is a quotation from Psalm 95, a number of verses of which we just sang in the form of today's responsorial psalm. If today you hear God's voice, do not harden your hearts as at Meribah, as on the day of Massa in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me, though they had seen my work. The psalmist interprets what happened in the past as a warning to his contemporaries. The author of Hebrews does the same. He tries to bring the today of the psalm into his time and to make it speak to those to whom he is writing. In reading this same text in our celebration, we are invited to hear it addressed to us. Like the people whom the author of Hebrews originally had in mind, we too have responded in faith to the message of the gospel and have tried to orient our lives on it. Like them, our journey has not always been an easy one. We've known doubts and experienced challenges in regard to our faith. Some of these difficulties have come from within, from our fears and failings. Some have come from without, from the secular nature of our culture, from scandals in the church, from the terrible suffering that so many undergo all around the world, from natural disasters, and from war and violence. Such things can make us grow cold in our faith and perhaps even tempt us to abandon it altogether. If this is in any way our situation, today's reading is a special message for us. Twice in it we are warned not to allow our hearts to be hardened. The heart here stands for the spiritual center of who we are, for what defines us as human beings. To harden one's heart is to allow it to grow insensitive, become callous, be unresponsive to others and to God. Jesus once said, learn from me, for I am gentle and humble of heart. His was clearly a heart full of compassion and love especially for those most in need. It was also a heart totally in tune with God. Hebrews warns us against an evil, unbelieving heart, one that turns away from the living God. A believing heart does the opposite. It remains open and attentive to God, especially as he has revealed himself to us in the story of Israel and in the life and destiny of Jesus. Calling God the living God underlines his continuing presence to the world and to us. He is a God of people, a God who invites us into relationship with him. He is the father of Jesus, the one who pours out on us the life-giving gift of the Spirit. He is a God who speaks. Today's reading encourages us to exhort one another every day as long as it is called today. We live in time. Our lives unfold day by day, month by month, year by year. We experience each day as something new, as another today, another opportunity to grow, to become more, to do the kind of positive things of which we are capable. One of these, Hebrews suggests, is that we should exhort one another to listen to God's voice, to remember what he has done for us in Christ, to remain steadfast 
in our faith. Confronted with difficulties, we can sometimes think that we are alone. It is then that things tend to become most difficult. In fact, we are never totally alone. We are related to all kinds of people and in a variety of ways. We have family and friends. We belong to different groups and organizations. We are members of a parish and of the broader community of faith. We all share a common humanity. We are all children of God. Although we can have a positive impact on people whom we do not know, it is especially those whom we do know, those who are close to us, those with whom we come into contact on a regular basis, that Hebrews invites us to encourage. We do it by word and example. For a Christian, there is no greater source of strength and encouragement than the person and teaching of Jesus. He is, as Hebrews puts it, the pioneer of our salvation. He goes before us and shows us the way, formulating it somewhat differently. Today's text says that we have become partners with Christ. We share his life. We have received the gift of his spirit. As long as we do not turn away from him, he will not turn away from us. In him, we have all that we need in order to remain both steadfast and faithful. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all of us that our sharing in this Eucharist will deepen and make more vibrant our faith, let us pray to the Lord. For the intentions of our donors and of those who have asked us to pray for them, let us pray to the Lord. For mothers or fathers bringing up children on their own, that they will be helped and strengthened in their efforts, let us pray to the Lord. For our deceased relatives and friends and for those who have died this past night, that they will be brought to eternal life in God, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given in human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. Lord, receive our gifts, let our offerings make us holy and bring us salvation. Grant this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. Father, all powerful, never living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. With love we celebrate his death, with living faith we proclaim his resurrection, with unwavering hope we await his return in glory. Now, with the saints and angels, we praise you forever.
Lord, you are holy indeed, the fountain of all holiness. Let your Spirit come upon these gifts to make them holy, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted. He took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. We are faithful, O Lord, to your command. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until In memory of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. May all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Make us grow in love together with Benedict, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all who minister to your people. Remember our sisters and brothers who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Using other words, which Jesus himself taught us, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, O Lord, from every evil, and in your mercy grant us peace in our day. Keep us free from sin and safe from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give to you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of that kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. Let us give to one another a sign of Christ's peace.
This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. Would those of you at home join with me now in this prayer to the Holy Spirit? Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, O Lord, and renew the face of the earth. O God, on the first Pentecost you instructed the hearts of those who believed in you by the light of the Holy Spirit. Under the inspiration of the same Spirit, give us a taste for what is right and true and a continuing sense of his presence and power. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God, all-powerful Father, may the new life you give us increase our love and keep us in the joy of your kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be with you. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Amen. Our thanks to two donors, the first an anonymous donor from St. John's, Newfoundland. The second is Annie Bernard and family from Ottawa, Ontario. And it's their generous contributions that made the televising of today's Mass possible. Our prayer book costs $10, so if you'd like to order it, please send a check or money order payable to the NCBC and mail it to the NCBC, 21 Dunlop Street, Richmond Hill, Ontario, L4C 2M6. Mom.